backstage. I uh, hope you enjoyed that last session. I think we're going to learn even more uh, around how to shake things up uh, in the sales world. We're joined by Dave Shanley. He is a co-founder and C or sorry, founder and CEO of Content Camel. Um, and we're going to be talking about how not to suck <clears throat> at driving urgency in B2B sales. Is that, is that right, Dave? That's right. Yeah. Urgency is the name of the game. Awesome. I'll, I'll let you take it away. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Um, yeah. So I'm, uh, I mean, I guess the, my background is uh, I've, I've built and exited a couple of companies and I'm definitely coming at this from a, a, a unique angle in the sense that I am uh, a technical founder. So my background is actually engineering. And so over building a couple of companies and actually seeing how the impact of like good go to market and like how that's a obviously massive multiplier um, in your success that uh, go to market is a super interesting place to focus. Right. So um, yeah, that's, you know, and you see companies really struggle on kind of like trying to do go to market or trying to copy what other people are doing and things like that. And it's, it's really like, if you can focus on just one thing, in aligning sales and what their activities are with marketing and what their activities are. It's all about driving urgency, right? So I, what I find is like marketing teams typically don't have like a framework for this. Um, from my background is like from the engineering mind, it's all about building a framework and building systems. And so how can you put a framework in place that's repeatable? It's not just a jumble of, of like tactics um, or like gimmicks or things like that, that it's like, month over month, how can you actually put systems in place? They're going to give you the results. And that's, I think a lot of sales teams get stuck too there, right? Where they're just chasing kind of like gimmicks and tactics and just sort of throwing stuff against the wall and, and what sticks. And it's really about like, what's the one thing you focus on? It's urgency and driving and getting deals done. And so what, this is definitely not about brand. So when marketers want to like rebrand or talk about like, the esoteric like branding stuff, it's, it's really, it's not about that. Um, it's not about just strictly like value propositions. So it's not just value, value, value and like gain messaging and it's gonna completely whiff and like miss people. Um, it's not organizational pain points. So when you're thinking about your messaging and where you're going to market, whether that's in like sequences from a sales rep perspective or like literally what you're putting on the homepage, it's not, um, hey, we're gonna save your organization $10 million. I like to say um, to the folks that I advise that you could literally be handing gold bricks out on the side of the street and people will be like, no, I'm too busy. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll come back later or something. It's like literally handing gold bricks out. I think that's where a lot of people feel like their products are amazing and they are, but it's that you're, you're just completely missing on driving that urgency. And, and uh, Errol talked about it in the session before a little bit. It's, you know, it's when are you speaking? How are you engaging? And it's not biasing the conversation from a sales perspective. It's not entering the conversation and having a conversation that's like really, really biased to like your product, your service, and, and thinking that you're getting great feedback, thinking that you have a deal in motion when, and then, and then going into like ghost mode where you're not going to hear from them maybe like ever again. Right. So it's, it's not these bucketed things. What it is, is making sure that you make this super tailored for the audience that you're trying to reach. And, you know, again, it's not the organizational reach. Like someone is a decision maker. They are a real person at an organization. From a marketing standpoint and from a sales standpoint, you cannot lose the focus on like the action. They are actual people. They're actual people that are like, actually one person reads your email. One person reads your, your homepage. They don't like gather around in a conference room and decide to like take it all in, right? It, you, you, you've got to reach that one person and so you need to understand, like, what are they triggered by in their mind, like in their in their in their in their head, they have like a mental model of like the checklist of like all the stuff they need to do, like all of their, you know, everything that they're struggling with, like it, at, at that day, that week, right, that month, what are their quarterly objectives, like from a very, very like personal standpoint. And so you need to basically like remind them about the pain or the frustration that they had re relative to that. That's how you push your uh, like your topic, it's a very, very, very top of their list. And they're like, oh yeah, I totally had that problem. And it was really painful and I'm super frustrated about it. Okay. And then you just need to like lower the friction, lower the friction of like taking the next step. And so 
if you just focus on on like really finding out like what like what is going to trigger them and and then again motivating those fears and frustrations and and that's it like that is just does your does your does your marketing content uh, focus on that? Like, is it supporting your sales process in the sense that every time they go and they're like looking at pages, downloading PDFs, whatever on your site, um, the collateral that you're sending over from a sales rep perspective, like, is it reinforcing those pains and those frustrations and reminding them? And then when you're kicking off your calls, is it, are you listening to them? Are you like engaging them and hey, this is what we've heard. Uh, most people struggle with this, this, and this. Does that resonate with you? what would you add to that list? Okay, because like the thing that they're gonna add to that list is absolutely the thing that's top of mind for them. And whatever's top of mind for them, you just bump that up in, in, into their priority list. And then guess what, like in your follow-up and everything like that, you get to highlight that gap between where, you know, what they're frustrated about and then like where they wanna be, right? The impact of doing nothing, like, hey, in their own words, like, Great, like, okay, so this really resonates with you. Uh, and you said, this is actually really important to you. And so um, what happens if you don't do anything? If they don't, if there's like no impact and no, um, no consequences for them not taking action, you don't have a deal, right? They're disqualified. You don't have a deal. There is absolutely no urgency. But what you get to do to drive this urgency and get these deals across the line and get, you know, get them started, get them all the way to finish is just keep repeating back the everything in, in, your, in your prospects, like own words, right? You said this, uh, and you said this uh, is gonna happen if you don't take any action. It's like really as simple as that. And so like the marketing team can use that on the front end for all of the collateral, you know, basically that they're producing, like all, you know, blog posts, uh, you know, site pages, all of that can basically echo in your prospects words, the actual, their actual words and how they frame the problems that they're struggling with and make it like super, super personal, Again, like not organizationally broad. Um, and so that you're really driving those fears and frustrations, highlighting that gap. And then people are hardwired to be consistent. And so they just like, they don't want to be inconsistent. So in all of your follow-up, you're making sure that you are repeating back to them. Um, this is, you know, this is what you said was really painful, right? We hear this all the time. We have the solution. And, and like, there's a really big deal here uh, if you don't take action. And you said this, it is in your own words, super consistent. Right. And from like a system standpoint, um, I highlighted here, like it's basically first principles as you're building up um, this part of the system and like weaving this in to what you're doing. You want to you want to like think through this and really like really just think this up from like the from the ground up. So what I see like marketing teams, sales teams doing is just sort of like copying what other people are doing. Right. Whether that's outbound sequences or their messaging on their website. Um, you know, you need to think about like what is going to resonate with like the real person that is going to read your stuff and interact um, with your message wherever they are. And, 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 and just by thinking that up from like the ground up as a team collectively together, you'll get to better, like better tactics, better execution than you will trying to like follow what everybody else is doing because they, you know, it's not necessarily working the best that it can work for those other folks. And what you read online is not always the truth. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, would love to, uh, to dive into to more detail and take questions and things like that. Hey Dave, super, super interesting presentation. Oh, and also like, yeah, we have a template on this. Sorry, <laughs> we have a template on this that is not like the generic, like honestly, like super lame, uh, template that you know is like psychographic uh you know information yeah. this is like real deal like really focusing on what are the, what are your personas triggered by what are their pains and frustrations again like at a personal level and then like how do you tra translate that into like product or service messaging right. so i would definitely check these out and so where where could people find that template uh the links are here there you can go on our website um contentcamel.io and we have, they're featured in our resource page. Um, you can obviously search for them uh, on the site. And, and if you get a copy of this deck, you can check those out. Awesome, perfect. Cool, um, so a couple of quick questions from my yeah. side. Um, many B2B sales are 
a committee sale, right? Like there's a, there's a sure. buying committee, right? Yep. And there may be different pain points. Like for, I'll give you an example, very personal example for, uh, from us at Breadcrumbs, right? Often the, the go-to-market leaders, right? The, the demand gen leader, the CMO, who, whoever, very revenue focused, that's what they want to fix, right? But there's usually like an ops person or a tech person involved. And they're like, I got six other projects, yep. right? That I got to get done. How do you, how do you use this, this principle in like a matrix type scenario? Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, there's always more buyers involved in the decision than you think, right? Like that's a trap for salespeople is they think, Oh, I've got like, I've got a quote unquote champion and <laughs> we've got, you know, and there's, and there's two people that are, that are basically involved in the deal. Well, behind those two people are 10 people that are influenced that deal. Right. Right. I mean, it's going to be like 12 people <laughs> basically like for any significant um, expenditure and you got to get it through purchasing too. Right. right. So, the, the thing to do is every time you have that conversation and this, and again, this is like the not obvious, but super basic play every time you have that, co the, the conversation, because they're going to bring more people in. Ideally they, you know, they bring more people into the conversation. Like, Hey, I'm going to invite my boss and she's going, you know, she's, she's going to come check this out. You know, can you show us like a demo, right? They want, they usually go to like something very concrete. What you're going to do is rewind and do it all from the beginning. You're going to rewind and have the conversation like, hey, this is what we heard, you know, and it's great to meet you, Sarah. But like, hey, this is what Emily shared are her frustrations and like what she's tackling. And you like literally update the slide. Like the slide is the, the intro. This is the very first slide, right, of your deck. It's not, you know, it's not like we do this and we solve for this and you can gain all this and it's the solutions, all this big thing. It's just like literally, hey, this is what we heard. People are really frustrated about this. Uh, and this is what Emily shared on our previous call. It's there on the slide what resonates with you? Like, what are your frustrations? Right. You have to start the conversation so that they're start, they're talking. And then, you know, Sarah just joined the conversation. She's like the next level DM and she's going to start, you know, echoing back, like what's really important to her. And that's what you map to. Right. Right. Next level DM, just so everybody understands. We're talking oh, about the maker, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so as those people come in, you, you want to aggregate, uh, the things that matter to them and then echo that back, right? Yeah. That's going to, you know, what the boss cares about, you get to replay that back in your follow-up. Yeah. You know, what, what the, the individual contributor cares about, you get to replay that back and, and to keep needling that, keep moving that forward, right? Echoing that back. Hey, you said this, right? Yeah. You said this was really important. And you said, this is, this is what happens if you don't solve this right now. Right. This, that's, so that's going to drive, that's going to drive it. Two more quick questions uh, yeah. before before we run out of time. One, interesting macroeconomic conditions today, right? Lots of companies fearful, you know, uh, hesitant to spend money. We're seeing the CFO more often in every deal. Yeah. Um, how you know how does this uh, work in in this situation, like in today's environment? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously, if, you know, you. A lot of times you, you, the CFO is involved, but you can't necessarily speak to them, right? So they are the sort of kind of like hidden persona. I mean, I, I start to build up a pattern of like, what do they care about, right? What, what's, what is, what are they angling for? Um, I mean, they're managing the overall budget, purchasing departments, you know, I mean, it's the classic thing, like they love to get, they like, they look for discounts, right? And yeah. so it's a sort of anchoring, playing the game, you know, understanding what, how the purchasing process goes. Um, and the, and the thing is, is that I, I like to think of a different way of like approaching that sort of the end to end sale where you're working backwards and you have all of the materials from like, if you imagine the sale closed and like the post sale state, basically have your deck and have your materials like backing up from that state where, Hey, we've been, it's, you know, it's really successful. CFO signed off on it and you're now you're launching it to the team. And then they're giving like the overview of like what, you know, breadcrumbs or content camel or whatever is going to do for the organization. Yeah. And, and if you work that, like if you envision it from like that, that working backwards state, then you are equipping your, they're not really champions, but you're equipping like the coaches and those decision makers to basically present the, the pains and frustrations and the solution 
to what would be the CFO and like okay, what, turning what them sellers, right? Basically, exactly like turn them into sellers, but like in a really systematic way. Yeah. Right. It's not like the it's not the gain. Again, it's like not gain messaging. It's it's not just simply like this is going to save us ten percent or this. You know, we get to do like this thing that yeah. we think is amazing, and they th- yeah. and, the, and the company that's selling to us think it's amazing. It's like no, like we get to solve. We're frustrated by this every all the time. This is really painful um, for us, you know, and this is the impact of the organization if we don't do anything. For sure. Dave, I have a ton of other questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to dig into this like fear and frustration concept. Maybe you yep. and I get together and do a webinar or something on that topic uh, one yeah. day from now. But yeah, last question, because uh, we're pretty much at time. Matt yeah. Anderson asks, uh, the pain points you are echoing are found through discussions as a result of a warm lead, or are they the result of a lead gen funnel? It's all of the above. <clears throat> so, I mean, in a systematic approach, this is things break down where, um, you know, marketing and sales, everybody on the front line is, is, is sort of gets siloed and is not aligned. So the, the more kind of s- sort of sessions and, and, um, parts of the fr- like a parts of the system that you can implement to start surfacing these insights, the the pain and the pain conversations are basically happening everywhere. I mean, you you can do things like if you if you're like a brand new product and you and you don't have customers, right? And you have, have nobody to talk to. Go on like Reddit, go on Twitter, go go online and like search for what people are talking about, and people will echo their frustrations, you know, online. Um, it does come from conversations like. It, you know, inbound, you know, outbound conversations that are sourced and you've kicked them off the right way because you've introduced like, hey, this is what we're hearing. So and that that what we're hearing can start with a brainstorm if you literally don't know, like yeah. what do you think they care about, right? And then they'll correct you. Like you'll start having the, literally the first conversation that you have, they'll be like, no, I'm actually, that's, that's not where I'm frustrated. I'm actually frustrated about this. Right. Awesome. Dave, thank yeah. you so much. Great topic. Great chat. Yeah. Um, obviously people can check out content camel online. If folks want to get in touch with you directly, what's the best way to, for them to do that? Yeah. So I would, um, I'm on the, on the Slack groups, like kind of online geniuses and Superpath. So you can, you can direct mess, message me there. It's just Dave at content camel.io as well. Perfect. And I'm also on LinkedIn. So yeah, awesome. kind of feel free, feel free to hit me up. I think actually right before this, I would connected. I got like a little alert from LinkedIn. So that's great. I happen to check. Awesome. Listen, everyone, thanks for joining. Thank you again, Dave. Uh, we're going to take a short break and be back uh, with another interesting topic. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. <laughs>